How far would you go to have the perfect body? People would do some drastic things. Then, light triggers pain, touch triggers pain. The woman who beat a debilitating diagnosis. With food, you went from being wheelchair bound to riding your bike. It felt so miraculous. How other patients are proving her right. It's amazing because it's brought my health back. Plus, the hospital hero that gave a complete stranger a kidney. That's today. MS can be a debilitating disease. Our first guest was a busy doctor and mother of two when symptoms left her unable to walk or continue doing her job. Have a look. I loved being physically active in my youth. Loved riding, biking, skiing, and doing my martial arts. So it began about 40 years ago with abnormal sensations in the face. It eventually become very electrical, very, very, very sharp. Almost 10 years later, I had dim vision in my left eye, no clear explanation. It was frustrating. I, it was clearly getting worse with my face pain. Now I had uh, visual problems. So after 20 years, my next symptom came up, and that was weakness in my left leg. I ended up seeing a neurologist and was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And that's when my pain uh, episodes are more frequent, more severe. I cannot even sit up. I'm in a zero gravity chair with my knees higher than my nose. And then I begin to have trouble with brain fog. Light triggers pain, sound triggers pain, touch from your kids triggers pain. Without my kids, I'll be at me every day. No one can endure that amount of pain. After I came to terms with having uh, MS, I decided I wanted to treat my disease aggressively. They told me about uh, the paleo diet, continued to go downhill, and my face pain relentlessly worsened. The next year I needed a wheelchair. Once I hit the wheelchair, it was very clear to me that conventional medicine was not going to stop my slide into bedridden, possibly demented life. And so I decided it was up to me. What if I redesigned my diet? to stress all these nutrients I was taking in supplement form in the food. Within the first month, I could tell that my pains began to lessen. I was about three months into this, I had a, a letter to mail. I picked up that letter, I put it in my pocket, I grabbed my walking sticks, and I walked down the hallway. And my, my colleagues were like, Dr. Walls, you, you're walking. They hadn't seen me walking in four years. Then, when Jackie and I were walking around in the neighborhood, I said, do you think I could bike again someday? Just another five months later, Jack tells me that there's a cancer fundraising ride. It's 18.5 miles. I was able to do that 18.5 mile bike ride with my family. It was so miraculous. Whenever I talk about that moment, I'm always crying. It was miraculous then, and it's miraculous still. Joining us now, we're blessed to have clinical professor of medicine at the University of Iowa and MS researcher, Dr. Terry Walls. Such an honor, Dr. Thank Walls, you. to have you here. And your message is one of hope. It's also seeing you as a doctor in the system, having to go outside the system and be your own health advocate. It's something we talk a lot about on the show, but I wanna ask you about a particular story you shared. You changed your approach to eating and you went from being wheelchair bound in six months to riding your bike. How did yeah. that feel? Like, oh my God, I, you know, I still cry talking about it because it felt so miraculous then because I had given up hope that I would ever be able to bike. And, and I just was taking one day at a time, but now I just ridden my bike. I'm crying, my wife's crying. It, it was a miraculous day. Well, what, what, what inspired that? Light, light bulb moment. I mean, you're a professor of medicine. What made you think, you know what, maybe it is diet? So it was a long process. Once I hit the wheelchair and I realized it's up to me to do everything I can to slow my disease, I went back to reading the basic science. I'm reading these basic science articles about the animal models of MS. And at first, I'm experimenting with supplements to support my mitochondria. Eventually, I have this brilliant aha moment like, what if I redesign my paleo diet in a very specific way to stress the nutrients that basic science says are critical to your brain? So that's a few more months of research. But, and then when I did that, it started on December 26th. I started eating all of these foods. And it was stunning. Within a month, my, my pain, my horrific pain is gone. My brain fog is gone. And I'm clearly beginning to get stronger. 
And just as a science lesson for everyone watching, with multiple sclerosis, your own immune system is attacking basically a protective sheets, protective covering of nerves in your brain and spine. It's why people with MS, no two people are alike in terms of their symptoms. But it's also, I think, highlighting how you were able to shut that process off to some extent. Yes. You, you designed this system through hardcore research science. And when did you know you were onto something? Well, when I realized that my energy is improving, my pain is gone, and my physical therapist is like, you're getting stronger, Terry. He had me starting to lift weights, uh, and he kept advancing what I was doing. I realized, you know, I'm getting stronger. I'm, I, I began walking around the hospital, uh, and then you know, it was about four months into this, I'm going to see the University of Iowa professor of medicine. I'm, I decided it's too far for me to walk because it's about a half mile. So I'm gonna take my scooter, but my scooter dies on the way and I have to push my scooter to the professor's, uh, to the hospital entrance, then walk up to the university. It's like, oh, this is stunning. Uh, so your and, scooter broke down, and, and for you to get the there, hill. you had to push it up a hill. It. Not only and that's... Walk, but you pushed it. Your I scooter. pushed it up the hill, and I left it by the door, and then uh, they offered to call the patient mobile, and I'm like, well, how long would that be? So, oh, about 20 minutes. I, oh, no, no, I, I'm late. I got to keep going. So I, I finished walking into my uh, chair of medicine's office, and I apologized for being late. I said, you know, my scooter broke down. He goes, oh, you had to wait for the patient mobile. I said, no, 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 I, I, I just, I pushed it up the hill and I walked over. He goes, Terry. Now at this, now, <laughs> when you were pushing your scooter, what was going through your mind? Were you surprised? Oh my God, I yes. mean, what were you <laughs> thinking? Yes, yes, I was absolutely surprised. You know, and, and fortunately, my chair of medicine had seen the decline, now saw this amazing recovery, and he goes, oh, you must be on Tizabri. Huh. I said, no, no, no. I'm not on Tizabri. Actually, I'm off all my disease-modifying drugs with my neurologist's approval. I'm just doing this with diet and lifestyle. Uh, and so he said, this is profound, Terry. Your assignment now is to get a case report written up. Work with your treating medical team and get this written up. And then after I got it writ written up, he called me back. I thought to praise me for getting the case report written up. He said, now I want you to do a safety and feasibility trial and that was in uh, 2009 that we got started. We started enrolling our people in 2010. Can you talk a little bit about the protocol you use sure. and then how you have now parlayed that into clinical trials? Absolutely. So at, at first, based on my research, I had this long list of foods I needed to stress. But as I was teaching this to others, I had to have a framework so people could implement it more easily than a list of foods. So it's a lot more vegetables three cups of greens, uh, spinach, chard, kale, et cetera, three cups of sulfur-contained vegetables, cabbage, onion, mushroom family vegetables, and three cups of deeply pigmented stuff, beets, carrots, berries. Then I wanted to have organ meat, liver, uh, once a week, and uh, ideally oysters, mussels, uh, heart as well. In your research, when you start talking, because I'm fascinated by this, when it comes to things like organ meats, you mentioned liver and heart. Yeah. What kinds of nutrients are you trying to pull, pull so from that? Co coenzyme Q, uh, lipoic mm -hmm. acid, carnitine, mm -hmm. uh, more uh, uh, essential fatty acids during that liver. It's a great source of B12, the B vitamins. It's not a good source of vitamin C. That's where you get from all those greens. So you get your C from there. This is really a phenomenal superfood. So liver once a week, very, very helpful. Oysters, mussels, uh, once or twice a week, also very helpful. And if you can get heart uh, once a week, that's also really helpful as well. Are you eating these foods raw? Are you, how are you preparing these foods? So a mixture of raw, cooked, and uh, fermented. So I like to have a lot of uh, sauerkraut, kimchi. Um, and some good probiotics uh, in there. Good, good probiotics, that's marvelous. Uh, if people have inflammatory bowel disease, things all have to be cooked. If you don't have inflammatory bowel disease, uh, I like to have about a half raw, half cooked. And what I was doing was I was reading the basic science and uh, the latest research to identify what are the nutrients that science says brains need. Then I went back again to the database to say, where are these nutrients in the food supply? And so then I redesigned my diet, got rid of all the processed food, any sugar, which actually I'd done years earlier. 
But now when I stressed what to eat, that's when the magic happened. My mental clarity improves, my energy improves, my pain is gone, and I'm getting stronger for the very first time in seven years. And I know that your protocol is beneficial for people with MS, but yeah. what about people with other autoimmune diseases? Is there any benefit there? Great, great question. We established the Therapeutic Lifestyle Clinic and saw people who are having pain, fatigue, any kind of chronic health challenges came to see us in that clinic. We're helping people with inflammatory bowel disease, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus, fibromyalgia, uh, Parkinson's, cognitive decline, uh, anxiety, depression. And then of course, the usual primary care stuff, obesity, high blood pressure, weight loss. And it's the exact same protocol. Same protocol. For everybody. Yeah, you know, and I'll personalize it. So we have variations for people who are meat eaters and people who are um, vegetarian, vegan for their religious beliefs. And I have uh, a ketogenic version for those who have reasons to be in ketosis. I love how there's a flexibility here with your protocols. So I applaud you for that. Your story is so profound. Of course, you're continuing clinical trials, which is great. I do want to ask you before we go to break, right now, today, as you sit there, how is your health? Uh, what medications are you on? So I'm on gabapentin uh, for my neuropathic pain. Tiny, tiny dose. No disease-modifying drugs since 2008. Uh, I saw, yeah, yeah, that's good. I'm still not running marathons yet. <laughs> I, I'd hope to. Uh, I'm hopeful. I'm biking. I bike to and from work. I feel great. May I ask how old you are, if you don't mind? 64. And my favorite part about your story, Dr. Walls, is that we can sit up here and say food is medicine, food is medicine. Wow. But then to actually start clinical trials. This is so exciting, but here's the reality. Stories are still very powerful and coming up, you're going to meet a woman who says Dr. Wallace changed her entire life. Stick around. Coming up. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in May of 2011. And I started having some balance problems and lost vision in my left eye. I discovered the Walls protocol. I taught myself the protocol. All of those symptoms have completely reversed. A doctor wheelchair bound by MS minimizes her symptoms with nutrition and spends the next decade trying to prove her plan works in clinical trials. For one young mother, she has all the proof she needs. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in May of 2011. I started having some balance problems and lost vision in my left eye. Went to several doctors. Finally, after all the tests, they figured out it was multiple sclerosis. So I went to the neurologist and I was handed three binders of drugs. Had a couple of relapses. After my second relapse, a conversation came up with the neurologist to switch tiers of medication. My symptoms got really terrible. The cognitive fog, the fatigue, my walking was terrible. It was just really hard to have things stripped away from you. And I discovered the Walls Protocol, researched everything I could about it, read the book cover to cover multiple times. I taught myself the protocol and I implemented the protocol. So all of those symptoms that I described and more have completely reversed for me. It's been an amazing transformation. Lisa joins us now with Dr. Terry Walls and wow, I am, I'm so happy for you and to think about the side effects of going on this diet and I'm seeing pictures of you doing pull-ups and probably these, you know, like whatever those Tough Mudder races are I, and I'm seeing you tear up here right now. Talk to us about the transformation that changing your diet has made in your life. Oh, it's huge. I was, um, I was a special education teacher for a long time and I had to quit my job because of the symptoms. So um, doing the protocol has been amazing because it's brought my health back. Where is your health now? Oh, it's great. <laughs> I actually switched careers because of it. So I, I became a functional nutritional therapy practitioner and a Walls health professional with Dr. Walls. And how, in your, how did it progress that you just said, you know what? Uh, my doctors aren't helping me. I need to try something else. I need to look into 
other avenues, and then you discovered Dr. Wall's protocol. How, how did that come about? So it was 2015, and I was having to switch between a tier one and a tier two MS drugs because I kept declining. And I was, you know, I did marathons, half marathons, and I did tough matters, and I was a fitness instructor, and I did all this stuff, and I wasn't able to do a lot of that stuff anymore. So it was really frustrating. So I started researching alternative treatments um, online, and then I found the, the protocol. I found Dr. Wall's TED Talk. So I watched it and I got really excited and I bought the book and then I brought it to my neurologist who told me that those people don't last long. So, sorry. So then, so then I dropped it and then um, a couple years later, lots of decline. Um, Tremendous decline. I wasn't able to go in the pool with my kids or go sledding or do active things. And I'm really active, so that was really hard for me. So then um, my husband switched jobs. I had to quit my teaching job all at the same time. And then I picked up the protocol again. I told my husband that it always felt right and I needed to do it. I just want to say sorry because I am absolutely floored that any physician in today's day and world would tell you that by minimizing processed foods and eating whole, true, nutritious foods would cause a decline, would cause you to not last long. And I, I apologize for our entire profession. I don't want to throw any one particular person under the bus. So I'm, I'm really glad that you decided deep down that changing how you ate was going to be the path you took. How, how hard was making this, uh, this, I guess, pretty dramatic shift in your diet? I had a lot to live for, so I had my kids. That was so, your motivation? Yes. Thank you so much for, for sharing your story. Like, I know that you are helping so many people right now, whether they're dealing with MS or they're dealing with another disease process and they're having a hard time, you are showing them what strength and hope looks like. Like, what do you want? Yeah. What do you want people to take from your story? Well, I want them to know that it's possible to heal because I was never given that possibility and it's very possible to heal. Don't give up on yourself. No. Nope. Don't give yourself grace and heal. And is there anything you would like to say to Dr. Walls? Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, just thank you. Thank you. Dr. Walls, I know that you're still engaging in continued clinical trials, yeah. and we're gonna go ahead and have information on our website about your continued trials. I think it's so important, and I just also would like to add that in medicine, we always talk about potential benefit versus potential risk. And one of, the, one of the things I think is so important is if you embark on a journey, as the two of you have, the potential benefit is what we see before us, which is you both have your health back. The potential risk was pretty low. Correct. And, and, and I think it's important in, in a medical establishment where certain things are not necessarily well understood, if the worst case scenario is you try to incorporate more of these really nutritious foods into your life, if that's the worst, and the worst thing that happens is maybe your symptoms improve some, but not entirely. Maybe, you know, maybe not everyone has the exact same result that the two of you had, but it, it, it worries me when a healthcare system is set up and there are doctors out there who would be opposed to this. I do want to add, Dr. Wallace, you're still working with your neurologist, right? Correct, correct. And no. I think that's important. No one here is saying right. yes. um, ignore, right. <laughs> ignore your neurologist. This is part of your process. And you know, at first, uh, in 2014, uh, the neurology community was very negative about uh, my approach. Now, in 2020, more neurologists are saying, yes, whatever you're taking, you need to also have high-quality diet, mm -hmm. a stress reduction program, an exercise program. It sounds like they're reading my book, that this is not an either-or. You do the WALS protocol, and you can't do drugs. You can take drugs and do the WALS protocol, or you may decide that you want to start on drugs first, and then decide, or you may want to start on the protocol first, and if suddenly you realize, like, oh my God, my pain is gone, my energy is better, 
it, it, at Iowa, right, for the patient who wants to do just diet and lifestyle, they're okay with be all in, do diet and lifestyle, we'll follow you closely, and we'll wait on the drugs. And, and if you continue to do well, we can just do diet and lifestyle. It depends on the individual. Dr. Walls, oh. I mean, you came up with this protocol, yes. and you are literally giving people their lives back. Yes. Like, how does that feel? How does it feel? So, you know, in, in 2007, I thought I, I had a terrible future ahead of me, uh, but now I, I, my gift is to the world, if I can come back from the precipice of a terrible life, bedridden, demented, intractable pain, to a rich, full life, there's hope for them too. Whatever their serious autoimmune condition is, there is absolutely hope that you may do much better using diet and lifestyle. Well, I love, I love what we see trending with diet and lifestyle. I mean, it started first with heart health, that you have to start eating right and exercising. Now we're seeing the trickle down effect that we realize that literally every system, potentially most medical problems are going to benefit. And the medical from establishment diet. is finally starting to well, start, listen. Start watching and, the doctors and listen up. Well, and, and, and look, we're all in this together. I do want to mention that an updated version of the Walls Protocol will be available wherever books are sold in March. I want to thank Dr. Walls, Lisa, so much for being here, sharing your stories with us. Let's take a quick break.